Hey guys, welcome to a brand new video. Today is going to be a reading vlog. And for those of you who are new, hello, my name is Jess. As always, make sure to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on other social medias. I have my links, you know, down below and in my YouTube profile. Today's just gonna be a simple reading vlog. And so I'm gonna kind of take you through what I've been doing today, what I'm reading and what I plan on picking up. Happy Labor Day, you guys. It is Monday. Um, it is the end of the three day weekend that I've had off. So tomorrow I do start back up to work. So I've basically Basically been utilizing this time to kind of get back on track with things and I wasn't going to actually vlog today or really at all this weekend I was literally just gonna give myself like a breathing room to enjoy the holidays to enjoy um, my time at home and to kind of just get the house in a cleaning and a good cleaning environment basically so Friday I well I didn't pick up the book on Friday I think it was Wednesday or Thursday but I picked up the unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren and this is a slow burn romance novel, enemies to lovers, fake marriage, fake dating. I mean, it has all of that in this book and it's quite a large book, but I started this last week and on Friday I got a lot of reading done. So I literally have a little over 100 pages left of this book. And as you can tell, I did annotate just the beginning of this book. And basically the reason that I haven't annotated majority of the book is one I stopped because I didn't have <clears throat> sorry guys I didn't have these I didn't have the sticker tabs and so I was just like under underlining and kind of remembering the pages and literally like at the fourth one I was like okay I'm not gonna do this anymore until I have the stickers and then I went ahead and got the stickers the next day but then kept reading kept reading kept reading forgot about it never underlined anything else just kind of like kept everything inward and so I need to work on that especially if I'm going to continue annotating for you guys and for myself but yeah I basically stopped but during this vlog I am gonna continue annotating and um yeah just enjoying that experience at first my heart did a couple flips when I started annotating just because I don't like um not messing up a book but like I don't have the best handwriting and I don't have a ruler but I've been using my Erin Condren like agenda planner as a ruler I just bought these two on Saturday so yeah it was kind of challenging doing the annotations without the supplies that I currently have and so that's why I stopped but I am going to continue like I said to do so today I only have a little over 100 pages now today's agenda is basically we're going to finish The Unhoneymooners today and then hopefully pick up another book in my September TBR list, which I'm really excited. I feel like I picked a lot of books that have currently been fitting my mood and also all the spooky vibes. I finished Mexican Gothic. I really enjoyed that one actually. And this one, I'm honestly guys, like I'm predicting that this is going to be a five-star read for me. I know I only have a little bit over 100 pages, but I'm pretty confident that the ending is going to wow me. And this book is going to be a book that I'm going to have in the back of my brain for a long time. And I'm going to continue as I've already have been recommending this to people because it is just a really good book where the characters aren't two-dimensional like there's quite a lot to them both i love the witty banner oh my gosh like this book i've actually laughed outwardly a lot compared to just other books where i can you know i might like giggle once or twice and then just laugh inwardly but this is definitely like an outwardly like oh my gosh this is so funny because we do have enemies to lovers as a trope in this and so of course we have enemies and their witty banter and like sarcastic humor towards one another is just so funny and sometimes they even have like dark humor every once in a while that i'm just like wow like this is <laughs> this is kind of unique and very funny and it just kind of gives more to the characters than um traditionally i guess in a romantic book which I guess you could say that I mean this is definitely like a romantic comedy and I've never really had like that type of romance typically I have like a romance that's like super drama or super like I don't know like, I think Nicholas Sparks like that like it's not funny it's just like either something terrible happens bringing two people together or it's just like a contemporary romance where you know there's not much to it but this is definitely like a huge slow burn I will say obviously there's sexual tension there are some moments where the characters do you dive into that type of relationship in their bedroom but what I really like about it is that it doesn't really focus on that part so much as 
the slow burn and build up from enemies to really friendship and then friendship to what's blossoming into lovers and so i really am curious to see how this book is going to end obviously a lot of people say that this is an enemy to lovers so i do believe that they're going to be lovers i mean it's pretty it's not predictable but it is just a romance book and we do kind of go in knowing that that's going to happen we just don't know how or well we do kind of know why but we just don't know how and yeah so i'm almost done with it so we are going to finish this i don't know what i plan on reading next but i am in a huge reading mood which basically means that i'm kind of down for any type of genre whether it's a small book or a large book really i just kind of want to consume everything on my tbr list and i'm really excited because it is labor day which means that we've barely started september and i'm already almost finishing two out of i think i have seven books on my september tbr list so if i can start my third one i feel like i am just you know right on track to completing my tbr list but also probably adding more book to that list which i'm really excited because um i'm really trying and i know this is kind of segueing off of like my agenda today i mean really this is my only agenda is to do this cook and then continue reading so that's really just the agenda but another thing i wanted to talk about was which i don't think i've mentioned on my channel quite yet so i do have a lot of books that i have not read basically on my tbr my whole bookcase right now is my tbr so i've done this thing where any book that i finished reading i have put it up in one of my drawers and so i like to basically see the books that i haven't read so far so my bookcase is nothing but books that i've been wanting to read they haven't been touched they haven't been read and really my goal is to read majority of the books on my bookcase before buying books now that's not to say that i'm not gonna like do a book haul probably this month or even next month i do have some of that planned because there are books that i definitely want to pick up but mostly it's for me to read what i've currently purchased and so you will start to see in my videos and just in other social media sites like instagram like you're gonna see books that will either i wouldn't say repeat but they're not gonna be as new as other booktubers and like what they're reading just because i have to be practical and i purchased these books i need to read these books i really don't like having a hoard of books that i haven't read and it's starting to feel like that where i'm i'm not feeling anxious but i feel kind of guilty that I have these beautiful books sitting on my shelf that I really want to read and then I keep going out and buying new ones. So that is just a goal to myself that I want to partake in, which is just reading the books. And I know that was just a long-winded expression or reasoning as to why you might see certain books that aren't, they're technically popular, but they're not popular like in the moment. And that's why, but I mean, like I said, I will still do a book haul here or there because I definitely want to pick up The Heart Principle by Helen Hong. And yeah, and I'm definitely going to read that sometime in September pretty soon. So yeah, it's just going to be books that I've really been really, 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 really wanting to add to my TBR list. And it's not going to be like a random haul, like where it's like, you know, just books that I see and I'm getting like book hat. Anyways. I am going to start reading the Unhoneymooners again. I'm going to continue annotating and then I'm going to check back with you um, at a later point in time just to kind of update you where with where I am in the book. But before I do that, oh my gosh, you guys, I need to kind of tell you just a little bit about where I am in the book. So where did I just, I just ended, oops. Yeah, I'm on chapter 14 and basically we definitely have the relationship developed, the romance part of this book has started to develop. There has been some drama just a little bit because there's a person who is on the island that they are on at the same resort and this person has caused a little bit of like a ruckus, just a little bit. And so I kind of just finished that part, but now we're kind of seeing the relationship between Ethan and Olive strengthen them a little bit more. And we've also have been opened to some drama that's back home with her sister Amy Potential 
eventually with her husband so there is something that has been happening it's kind of like a side plot with her family back home specifically with her sister and her husband that we're slowly becoming aware of because of ethan and all of getting closer and just talking about their family and talking about their history because they've known each other for like three years or something like that and so this is kind of where i'm at where the relationship their romance is definitely blossoming their friendship together is strengthening like they're starting to trust each other with um their insecurities and kind of their past and like their family and their values and stuff like that and i'm really enjoying it so that's where i am so when i update y'all you kind of know where i am and you're tracking it i will try my best to not say any spoilers in this in case you do want to read this so i'm i am going to try and be as vague as possible with certain situations and certain characters that may or may not potentially come up that way you are surprised and in going into this book and you're enjoying it as much as i am because i really had no idea what this book was about so i'm gonna stop rambling i've been talking for almost 12 minutes and i'm gonna start reading all right i have an update for you guys it's been a couple hours i was making dinner and it's almost done i think i have like 25 ish minutes left for my chicken to finish but I did read a couple of more chapters and I did annotate just a little bit more um, as you can see here. So a lot of stuff has happened plot wise, which by the way, I apologize for this lighting. It's actually really terrible. It's, you know, it's sundown and I don't have a ring light. I don't have anything other than like this light and then just natural light. So yeah, I'm looking a little weird right now, but we're just going to roll with it. So anyways, a lot of plot development has occurred in the past few chapters we're gonna try to unpack this without giving too many spoilers so they did come back from their trip and now they're having to kind of face their family specifically amy and Dane, who is the actual married couple um, who got food poisoning and that seems to be going according to plan and well but there is something in the Dane part of this book that I'm not gonna say too much but basically there's just something that's kind of like uncomfortable happening between him and Amy and we're kind of seeing more development in that area and basically how Olive is handling it which right now is not very well and she's kind of conflicted on what to do about her thoughts and feelings and like stuff like that so we have that and then it's kind of sad but in the beginning of this book she did not have a job and then she got a job offer the day that she was visiting Hawaii and then some things happened while on the island that forced her to kind of lie about her identity and then when she came back unfortunately like that basically just like bit her in the ass a lot of things just like went out the window for her in that retrospect so that is kind of sad but i was kind of expecting that part to happen in this book where her job wasn't really going to work out for her so to speak so I'm not really surprised about that. It is kind of sad because we do like Olive and I wish nothing but the best for her character. But let's be real, like she just did something that she shouldn't have done and she had to own up to her consequences. So there's that. And then basically right now we're still seeing, well, not, okay, we're still seeing obviously like their relationship, but it's not developing as quickly as it was on the island. Yes, they're like super close, but I don't know. I mean, this could just be me. But basically I have a few, I don't know, I have a lot left of reading and I'm kind of like nervous to see like what's going to happen because right now everything seems peachy and or what is it, peachy cream with them and I just feel like we have a lot of pages to go so I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> like that makes me so nervous. Do y'all do that? Like do y'all really root for a character's development or like a relationship? And then you realize that like everything's going fine and dandy, but y'all still have like several chapters left and you're like, what is happening? Like, why are they so nice? Like, like basically what's going to happen to their relationship? So I'm really interested to see what's going to happen in regards to the relationship. Definitely what's happening with Dane and Amy. I definitely want to see some positive things happening in Amy's court versus Danes but we'll see I don't know how Olive and Ethan are gonna handle it and I think it's gonna kind of blow up in Olive's face with how she handles it but that's just my guess anyways you guys I'm not gonna say anything else because I feel like I'm kind of rambling and it's really hard to <laughs> this is very hard to kind of give you you know like hot takes of what I've been reading 
but I really can't tell you too much because I'm trying not to say spoilers and I'm having to like think double time of like, okay, wait, can I say this? Can I say that to y'all? No, I can't say this. I'm going to continue reading. I think I have probably like 20-ish minutes or so now until the chicken is done and then I'm going to go eat dinner and then come back, read. I'm really determined, like I told you guys, to finish this book. Once I'm done with dinner and I put everything up in the fridge, like that's pretty much it. And then I can actually start reading this. But yeah, more to come. Happy Tuesday, you guys. Hello, how are you? I feel like I haven't spoken to you guys in quite some time just because I just got off of my three day Labor Day weekend, kind of like vacay basically. And I don't know, it feels kind of good to be back. I am in a huge reading mood and I kind of have just like a little bit of a chit chat to talk to you guys about later on today. But for the most part, we're actually going to pick a brand new book off of my September TBR shelf for me to read today. And I'm really excited because I'm kind of in the mood to read any type of genre, which I think I have some romance and a thriller and maybe just like a uh, like a random contemporary or not a random but like a contemporary novel that's not really like romance related or at least I don't think so but yeah I'm gonna kind of go through that and then yeah we'll see how today goes so it is Tuesday morning just did a couple of work things went through some emails made some coffee I had tea earlier that's how I started my day today was with a cup of tea and it was really delicious. It was like a Moringa pineapple flavored one that I got at Whole Foods Market a month or so ago. But now I'm just drinking some coffee. I'm trying to kind of get my energy levels up. I just put on some clothes for today. I'm wearing a really comfy black shirt. And yeah, so kind of the agenda for today, or at least what I have in mind, so we are going to obviously pick a new book and I kind of want to talk to you guys a little bit about the book that I read during the weekend and then yeah we're gonna go through that. I really don't have like house stuff like that's pretty much the whole reason I didn't film for the past three days is that everything housewise is pretty much done except I have to put up laundry. It's clean I just have to hang things. But I'll sh not, sh you know, I'm not going to show you that on camera guys. Like that's something that I will do off camera. But yes, today is going to be a huge reading day. Also filled with work, mostly after hours. Uh, <laughs> I hate when I say after hours, but mostly after work is when we can really just dive deep into the reading sphere. So that is kind of the agenda today. I know it's not much, but I think today's just going to be like a really cozy day just to kind of continue on my TBR journey which I'm kind of happy. So I have seven books on my TBR list and I know it's not a lot, but to be quite honest, I have a lot going on in September. I feel like I always say that, but I really do. Starting not this weekend, but I think the next, no, is it this weekend? I don't know. I need to look. I have a couple weddings each week. I have to go to Houston for a birthday and there's just like random house stuff. Me and Alex are planning our honeymoon that will probably be happening in October so there's just a lot of like little things so that's why I have seven books on my TBR so it's not that many however I must say that I've already finished two out of the seven and yeah I wasn't expecting to read this fast I mean it's technically September 7th so I guess I'm kind of maybe right on track I just didn't think I was gonna finish two books to be honest by today and that I'm starting a third one. So I did finish Mexican Gothic last week. I really enjoyed that. That was um, a four or five star rating um, on Goodreads. I can't remember what I did, but um, yeah, it was very awesome. It was one of the first Gothic horror novels that I've ever read in my entire life, surprisingly. And I really enjoyed it. I loved our main character. I thought she was just kind of like, overall a very brave woman because if I was in her position, seeing the things that I had saw and kind of just witnessing what was happening in that house, I would have skedaddled like a long time ago. Like day one, I would have been out. So Mexican Gothic was really well. Um, I finished The Unhoneymooners yesterday night and I loved it. Well, okay, I would give it, I gave it a four star on Goodreads, but really and truly I might put in a disclaimer that it might have been 4.5. I loved everything about that book except for the ending. The ending just felt like 
it was kind of rushed and a little bit exaggerated like the conflict or like the miscommunication piece that was in this book just didn't seem realistic and it seemed kind of weird that the miscommun miscommunication piece would be the part that kind of drew our characters into a little bit of drama but nonetheless i thought majority of the book was great i loved the witty sarcastic banter between both of our characters to the point where i outward giggled quite a bit with that book and although it's a romance i was kind of glad in a way that it was more focused on the slow burn than like the actual act of doing it and yeah i mean not like no offense against that i mean i i like those books too but I really liked how we got to know the characters, how we kind of get to know their past just a little bit, why they're enemies and why they're going to be lovers. And yeah, it was just overall a really nice read. I'm really glad that I read it because in my eyes, it is definitely a summer read and obviously we're into the fall season now. And yeah, I wanted to just finish it because if I didn't do it this month, honestly, it would probably wait on my shelf until next summer because I am that type of person who sometimes I really don't like to read summery or spring books in fall or winter. I like to go with what the season provides. And yeah, some might find that weird. I frankly don't, but I'm glad I read it in time so that I can start really prepping for the fall and winter season with what I plan on reading. So yeah, I'm gonna stop rambling. I'm gonna drink a little bit of my coffee and then I'm gonna show you guys my TBR shelf. It's not that much. Like I said, I only have a few more books left for September and I'm not really gonna talk through it. So it's gonna just be some B-roll just because my husband is working and our house, our acoustics just literally amplify your voice. Like I could be whispering and he could still hear me and I really don't want to um, have him lose focus and I don't even know if he's in a meeting right now. So we are just gonna have some B-roll starting now. by Jennifer Weiner. So this is the last book on my TBR shelf that deals with summer vibes. I really thought that I should probably pick this up because if I like leave this till the mid or late September month, like I feel like the vibes are going to be off. They're going to be lost because right now I feel like it's a perfect time for me to start this because I'm still in the summery mood because of the unhoneymooners. But like I'm like one step closer to literally just chowing down and devouring all of my cozy autumn reads. The second reason why I chose this is because this is the longest book on my TBR shelf. It's currently over 400 pages and I really don't think any of my other books have 400 pages or more. So this is definitely the longest and I thought that this would be perfect to do this in the beginning of the month because 
because towards the middle and end i do have a lot going on and i'm kind of nervous that if i leave it to the end i won't finish it so not only will the vibes be off but i probably won't finish it because it is what it is i i am very busy towards the end of the month but i thought this would be the perfect read for us now so how i'm gonna do this is probably read this book for the next couple of days and then hopefully either in the vlog with that or maybe start a new book during this vlog i haven't decided i do have a couple of other things that i plan on filming for you guys this week so i don't know we may end it off with this book we may not we shall see in the next couple of days regardless of that if you haven't heard of this book or you haven't seen any of my previous videos kind of mentioning it we follow two characters we follow daisy shoemaker as the main pov and she's basically your typical suburban mom she has a cooking business she has a husband she has a daughter she pretty much has like the quote-unquote perfect suburban life however that's not really the case like her kid is rebelling her husband's distant she's not really being thrilled by her work life she's really just dreaming about another type of life that she could possibly have it kind of goes or boils down to that because she does get misdirected emails that are supposed to be to a lady named diana starling and she pretty much based off the emails i'm assuming is guessing that diana just has like this overall glamorous single lady life basically daisy just starts really dreaming of being her however she does apologize like hey like these were misdirected emails i apologize for getting these and like you know whatever and she basically and of getting an invitation from diana to like go ahead and meet and they hit it off they become great friends but we as the reader are soon going to find out that this wasn't a like leave it up to chance encounter like there are some premeditative thoughts that are swimming around with how they have met and obviously they share a past of some sort and it seems like this book is going to hash out how they both know each other somehow some way why they know each other and what could possibly come about them knowing each other like i feel like there's going to be a huge thriller-esque or just like drama ensuing in this book and i'm really here for it that is the overall synopsis of what we're going to be reading now for the rest of the morning it's almost noon which means it's almost lunchtime. i am kind of hungry i left my coffee out <laughs> in the living room and I should have brought it in here. So it's probably getting cold after I've been talking to y'all for a few minutes. But basically I'm gonna finish off my coffee. I do need to look at a couple of work emails just because this is still Tuesday, it is the work day. I'm gonna look at some of that. I'm gonna respond, do my little thing for maybe 30 minutes or so, kind of get caught up and then I'm going to make lunch, which I mean, honestly, it's not really that fascinating. I am reheating what I made for dinner last night, which was boiled risotto with some black beans with white rice. So really nothing crazy. I might add a salad just to make it a little bit more of a full meal. That way I'm not kind of snacking in between. I've literally been really bad. At at kind of snacking in between meals i try not to and for the past couple of weeks i've just really really been bad at it i bought like cheeses and fruit snack and it's just not working i've literally been breaking out i don't know if y'all can see but i have a couple of pimples just throughout my face and i can tell it's because of the unnecessary eating so i'm gonna make sure that i have a very full meal and then we're gonna start reading which i do plan on also filming today a couple of things taking pictures for instagram so not only is today a work day it's a reading vlog day and it's also a film day so we are pretty busy yeah i have a lot of stuff to do this is why i took the time during the three-day weekend to really clean the house like as you can tell like everything's spotless everything's put up except for the laundry gonna do that later tonight so i'm not even worried and that's not even gonna be shown so this is why i did what i did because i am a very busy lady this week and my overall goal is to obviously film this for the next couple of days for you guys i have a video that i'm gonna film today that i plan on either putting up tonight depending on my editing and like how quickly i can do it or tomorrow which is wednesday so i don't know you guys we'll see but I do plan on filming in between, which unfortunately I cannot show you that because I literally only have my one uh, and yeah, so y'all won't be able to see it, unfortunately, but that's what I'm gonna be doing behind the scenes. So I may change into a different outfit. I may not, who knows for that video, but regardless, y'all are still getting content, regardless if I'm wearing a black shirt or not. Anyways, I'm gonna stop rambling because I feel like that's what I'm doing and I'm going to continue doing what I said I was going to do. What 
is up you guys we are back it is currently 7 20 ish p.m i know it's been a while since i've updated you guys but work was work i filmed my first ever tiktok and yeah your girl is officially on that book talk i did a newbie tag so make sure to check out my tiktok down below i'll be sure to have it uh, yeah, that was pretty crazy. It was a wild ride and it was very fun. So I did that I also filmed a video for you guys that honestly should be edited tonight. Will we get to it? Probably not. It's honestly very late I actually want to read and just kind of eat and chill out just a little bit because today was just like a really Off day for me. It's Tuesday. It was work day and yeah, I'm not used to that plus I'm not really used to filming like a video and a vlog at the same time. I honestly need like another battery or something like that because I have to wait for it to charge and I don't like, you know, to charge it for a little bit and then take it off and then charge it and then take it off. Like I'd rather just wait like an hour or however long it charges. And sometimes I wish I didn't have to do that because I can continue to like film for you guys. But that's just something on my to-do list one of the days i'm gonna get a new battery but anyways the good stuff okay so i started reading that summer i finished the prologue not too long ago which wasn't that long but we did get a lot of details and a perspective of who diana was or is basically well kind of was because it was when she was a 15 year old and so we got a little bit of insight of how she spent a whole summer at the Cape being a mother's helper and who she met while there. So when she's 15, her mother, who is a secretary at Boston University, has a coworker named Dr. Veronica Levy, who has twins. She has Sam and Sarah, who are both four-year-olds. And honestly, she needs help while she's at home. And she is a writer. She has um, published a few books. She teaches some literature class at Boston University. She's married, but she needs help. And so she asked Diana's mom if, hey, like, can your kid help me for the summer? She's 15, she's responsible, and her parents give her permission. So we have a 15-year-old going to the Cape for a whole summer, basically being a mother's helper, which is just helping out with the kids when she can. And it seems easy peasy because majority of the time they spent their days at the pond or at the beach with Dr. Veronica. It's just that the four-year-olds were there and it seemed really nice and easy. And she also made friends with other nannies and other mother's helpers and like other people kind of in that world. And you know, they gossip, they become friends, they, you know, kind of do things together. They hang out after working hours which is where she met this guy named Poe. Now Poe just recently graduated from an academy and he is about to go to college. He's at the Cape with some of his friends just spending quality time before they head off becoming adults going on their new adventure and so he's single he recently broke up with his girlfriend of like two years and he meets her and him and Diana basically just kind of hit it off as friends you know they just ask each other questions like you know where are you from what do you plan on doing with your life like how old are you what grade are you in and she is going to be a sophomore they have a little bit of a gap between them and I don't know like how that's gonna go or like what's gonna go down in this book just because towards the end of the prologue she gets invited by him to a bonfire which it, it is a, kind of apparent that they have these like just quite commonly i guess i don't know if this is like a real thing in the cave or if it's just for the book but i think bonfires are pretty cool i've never seen one i've only seen it in tv and on tv and movies so it's very interesting, but she gets permission to go from Dr. Veronica and she meets up with Poe and you know, they're kind of just hanging out and kind of being little like lovebirds. Like they're not kissing or anything like that, but they're just like really close to one another and sharing a drink, stuff like that. And then basically she just has butterflies with him pretty much nonstop throughout the whole prologue. We just kind of see her doing googly eyes at him, just constantly thinking about him, constantly thinking about being kissed because she's never been kissed, she's never been in a relationship, and so she's just really infatuated with Poe. And it kind of stops there, it kind of leaves us at a cliffhanger like, okay, what happened at that bonfire? What's going to go down between her and Poe? Are they going to speak to each other? What does the future hold? And so I'm kind of curious to see how this is going to 
intertwine with the story of Daisy. Like why does Daisy matter? And why does she have some weird connection with Diana during this part of Diana's life? And it doesn't seem like at all suspicious or at all like weird. Like there wasn't anything in the prologue that kind of screamed at me like this was going to be like something serious. Who knows? But yeah, so I just finished reading the prologue. I'm going to continue reading maybe just a few chapters get some quick dinner, and then I will update you guys when I have something to talk about. Oh my gosh, this lighting is absolutely terrible, but you guys, we just came to a part of the book, like literally like the first chapter, that we just found out that Daisy's real name is Diana, and she goes by Daisy, which she never said why, but like, now I understand why she was getting emails from the other Diana, or like emails for the other Diana, because I was like, how does Daisy and Diana even mesh? But yeah, her real name's Diana. And she just started talking to Diana Starling. I'm just going to keep saying Daisy. It's just too confusing when you have two Dianas. But basically, they've been talking. And I feel like Daisy's character is a little bit of... One of those types that just like overshares a lot to compensate for something and literally like she's been emailing diana just like about all of her problems you know starting with her husband hal like he's super distant he's kind of um he's not mean but he's just very authoritative in the relationship and then like her daughter is just really messing up at school she accused a boy at Imlin, which by the way she goes to the same boarding school that we hear about in the prologue from poe so that kind of like rung a bell and then also we found out that daisy's family has gone to Imlin. it was just her who did not go went to a public school and then got pregnant we also found out that daisy and hal they're like 13 years apart so like she met him when she was 20 and he was 33 and that's kind of wild so we are getting to know daisy just like a little bit better and she's just an oversharer and diana seems to be okay with it like she's actually emailing her back pinging her back and kind of just like going along with the story and the vibe and that's super interesting but yeah i don't i don't know i'm i'm kind of like a little thrown off with daisy's character like i understand like what she's going through it seems like she's trying to find an escape of some sort because really and truly it's her daughter uh beatrice who's just causing a lot of issues back at home and she literally has to go to beatrice school i think with Hal like the next morning so she's like tossing and turning so yeah i just didn't know that you guys I did not know her name was Diana. Like that makes so much sense. Anyways, back to reading. Another quick update for you guys. So we are coming to find out that Beatrice, their daughter, vandalized the school, like some parts of the school, and also accused a boy of raping her roommate. And of course she got expelled from this school and her dad is furious her mom is in her court you know she was asking the not the principal but the dean of the school like was it true did this boy like in fact rape her roommate and of course they didn't respond to her and so she is kind of on the side of like well you know did my daughter do the right thing did she stand up for herself and her roommate did she spark this chaos or are there more facts to the story than meets the eye and she kind of agrees deep down that Emlyn wasn't the right school for her daughter that it never has been never will be and so maybe there's something else but of course hell doesn't think that so that was just a quick update i literally just finished chapter one that was only chapter one you guys it was kind of long that was Actually, I'm on page 43 now, if you can believe it. So 43 pages was just the ep uh, the prologue, chapter one, and then obviously like the beginnings of the book. Wow. I am going to kind of change positions. I need to take out my contacts. They're like really bothering me and put on my glasses and maybe like eat something and then just continue reading. But obviously definitely not finishing nowhere near <laughs> this book by today because it's already getting really late i do need to get myself to bed eventually but yeah i just wanted to update you guys yeah this lighting is definitely not it's not the look what is up party people it is officially a new day it is wednesday i just showered let my hair air dry put on just 
something on my face so that we are presentable today and i wanted to apologize i did not end off the vlog yesterday when i was going to sleep i read a little bit washed my face literally passed out like in that order very quickly so i didn't update you guys i did read just a little bit further and i kind of wanted to give you a update of what i read and kind of the agenda of today so let's start with the agenda i'm going to kind of update you about what i did what i read last night then i'm going to eat lunch i'm not going to show you that because it's the same thing it's really boring it's just the chicken beans and rice i mean what's new and then i am going to start either reading and then like we're gonna get like straight into it or i do need to film maybe a little tiktok i don't know i'm kind of in that like tiktoky mood and yeah and i also need to edit today so that's kind of the plan just i don't know what order this plan is going into my huge goal for this book i want to get halfway into this book which i know doesn't sound like a lot but honestly it really is because i do have to edit a video today i have to make sure it uploads i want to do the tiktok stuff we also have work that's in the mix and yeah i don't know i hate setting goals like that for myself but like i'm really trying to do that and i'm only on page what page am i on i'm on page 72 we still have a long ways to go i think i have to go to like 200 and like some odd pages before maybe like 211 212 something like that 210 before i'm like even halfway so like it's not that bad but still i have to edit and i'm very oh, i'm not looking forward to that but it is a must because i do want to upload a video for you either today or tomorrow so that is kind of the agenda still in the works so we'll see how that goes now let's get back into the book so i did read like i said just a little bit more after i talked to you guys and it was pretty much from daisy's perspective and her childhood and kind of to how she is now which is obviously an adult she's in her 30s one i feel really bad for daisy because she had a roller coaster of a life so her family went from basically like mediocre middle class family to extremely wealthy because her dad did some great investments at the time to literally they became broke no savings her dad died of a heart attack unfortunately and her mom basically just had to like pick up the pieces sell the house move into an apartment and she really didn't have the same upbringing as her older brothers who are extremely older than her her friend group really and she kind of just i wouldn't say like went off the rails but she didn't have the upbringing that she should have had and it's not her fault i mean she was young so like her brothers went to emlyn which is the academy that we have all known to come or come to an understanding about through this book she however had to go to a public high school because of how her family situation happened she also lived on the cape as a child so maybe i'm thinking that's how she knew diana starling was from that as a child like that's the only thing i can think about that's really connecting them is that she was in that lifestyle for like 10 to 12 years growing up and obviously she went to the public high school she did get really good grades like she did have a good head on her shoulders like she knew what she needed to do to get into university she did and then she did really well and she met hal and then basically she dropped out she started having beatrice or b and now we just kind of see her today as a suburban mom pretty much has has, you know the credit card in her hand that was like the one thing that we kind of found out about Hal in the beginning is that he was super respectful you could tell he really loves her or he still loves her but like he's like you know what you never have to worry about money like here's my credit card do what you have to do pay for this wedding they said that like their first year at his home like she redecorated because he didn't really have anything and so like the first year instead of her like transferring to a different school she just focused on like shopping and decorating which sounds fun to me but obviously she never went to school again she ended up just being a stay-at-home mother which that's fine as well she just needs a little bit more of something now unfortunately she also had her best friend pass away her best friend's name hannah sorry guys i had to look at that again because i was like wait why am i thinking of something else her best friend's name was hannah and they met at a baby class like a birthing class of some sort and they just hit it off instantly now hannah is the person who like she speaks what's on her mind she's very energetic very social and just kind of not extreme but her family is more like messy quote unquote than hers and Hal's houses and they just have more of like a lived-in situation and her and daisy hit it off extremely well then unfortunately 
quite recently her friend died of cancer and it just kind of happened suddenly and now daisy doesn't really have anyone to talk to she said that she has like you know friends that she can like invite to an exercise class or do like a little wine night but like no one who she really wants to communicate her problems with and she's been having problems like she feels super lonely with her husband just being super distant and the beach just keeps rebelling and you know finding her own way and she's trying to figure out like where does she put herself in this life that she's made no one really you know is talking to her so she because of all of this she thinks it's a great idea to meet up with diana like they said in the beginning they're going to meet and they're meeting in new york at a restaurant and what's really crazy to me is that she told her husband how and how just like eh, shrugged his shoulders whatever brand new day but like that's questionable to me because it's like bro you if you're loving her in this relationship like she's meeting a stranger you should at least show some type of like worried look in your face you should tell her to be careful maybe you should go with her like you should do something and he didn't do anything and of course she asked her daughter because her daughter is older and her daughter said no she's you know doing her own stuff which also it's not surprising because how her daughter has been portrayed but at the same time it's like your mother's again meeting a stranger and like no one wants to go with her to meet up with this person so like she doesn't get kidnapped or worse so all that's to say she still is going to meet this lady and she really doesn't have like there's no ping of worry in her face or like what she's been talking about like she's literally just been on the train telling us about her past on the way to the city she did get a hotel so that was like the one thing she said is that she's really been you know struggling so much that she deserves it so she bought herself a hotel room at the hotel where the restaurant is located in and that's where i stopped at the book last night so we are i think i think the next chapter actually is going to be the intro between her and diana and how that relationship is going to flourish a part of me feels so bad for daisy because i just don't want anything wrong happening with this diana chick like it seems like she's already had a rough life and i don't know what could have happened in daisy's past life that collided with diana's and like i really hope it wasn't anything crazy or anything sad or i don't know but like this i don't know i feel so bad i just feel so so sad for her like it was just like that one chapter about her whole life i mean she just summed it up and it was so gray and so just like nothing like it she just like kind of wiped away her life of this as if it was like not hers to control and that you know things are just happening and happening and happening to her and her family and it's like oh i just hate it but anyways we are going to continue reading like i said i'm hoping to get halfway through this book we shall see because there is other stuff that i have to do but like oh just i have to do this gotta do it you guys we gotta we gotta do it so anyways i am going to quit procrastinating now i'm gonna stop this and i'm gonna go eat something because i am getting a headache and then we are going to see what i end up doing next whether it's reading doing the tiktok or something else yeah see you later <sighs> you guys so i just finished part one i didn't even realize that there were parts in this at all but i just finished part one i am officially about to be on part two so really exciting a lot has kind of happened so we did meet diana's character and we didn't really honestly know too much about her like she didn't really talk during the bar meeting or like the dinner basically she kind of just like asked open-ended questions to daisy and daisy with alcohol in her system because diana kept refilling her drink without her like really knowing so like very subtle about it she just kept asking her questions about like oh her husband beatrice you know her brother her family how was it like growing up and daisy just like was an open faucet and i kind of think it's because one obviously she was kind of buttered up with diana like diana was bringing this like comfort vibe very like trustworthy also alcohol and the fact that like Daisy hasn't had anyone to talk to, especially her close friend Hannah who passed away nine months ago. So like this is her first time basically talking to someone and getting the attention and interest that she honestly deserves. And it's just really sad because we are slowly kind of being introduced to Diana and like, like I said, Diana didn't mention much, but the last couple of pages were in Diana's POV. So like, this is the first ever since the prologue and she literally like, she's crazy. She made Daisy meet her in New York thinking that she was going to live there and stuff like that. When in fact, this girl lives in the Cape. So she got on a flight after meeting Daisy, 
went back to the Cape and this man like took her home and I don't know who this man is. I guess we'll figure out who, who he is. But we do know that Diana is married or she's in a long-term relationship with a guy named Michael. We don't know who he is yet. And that basically she is going to come in as a wrecking ball and ruin Daisy's life. And I don't know what it has to do with Daisy, but something tells me it's because of the husband or her brother. And it's something to do with the university. Like these things are all connected. And I'm just kind of wondering like what is happening and like why does daisy have to get involved so that's really where i am right now i'm honestly just going to continue reading it's currently 2 24 so i just well i need to look at some emails for work i have it opened right here but i'm going to do that really quick and spend some time on that then get into part two which you guys so i have to admit so i'm about to reach a page uh page 100 and if i can do that i have a feeling that i might be able to pull this off reading until the halfway point today we'll still see i am trying to read as much as possible um during the daytime that way during the evening i can edit and upload my previous video so yeah you guys i i don't know i also have like a headache kind of coming on don't know why i mean i've had coffee well okay not coffee i've had tea i've had caffeinated tea i've been like getting water i have <laughs> i have fruit snacks in front of me and so i'm thinking about making some coffee but i really don't want to do that right now until maybe i'll read like another chapter or maybe this is like the perfect spot I'm waiting for my coffee god this lighting is so terrible and yeah i'm just feeling all types of ways oh my god do y'all like see that i'm really thinking of getting some more fruit snacks while we're kind of in intermission right now because i'm on my last little bag mm -hmm. been a few days i'm not gonna lie um as you can tell i have nails done i have eyelash extensions so i'm a whole new me i'm getting ready for two weddings actually once in a couple of days and once like a week from now and yeah i really need to update you guys i know it's been a hot minute but honestly this book has been really hard and difficult to get through because uh there's rape involved there's a lot of just emotions that you have to unpack with this book and a lot of actions that are just incredulous that you're just like you, you have to take your time with this book and i've been taking my time i kind of don't want to like oh man i don't even know where to begin like this book is not dnf worthy but there are so many times where i was like i don't think i can finish this book it's just not up my alley and i didn't i should have done more research with this book but at the time i saw it at target and i didn't do any research i thought the cover was pretty i thought it was going to be a huge thriller which in a way there is a thriller with this but to me this is more fiction just like standard everyday life fiction which i think is why i'm not really gravitating toward i'm not leaning towards this book this is a book i'm always going to remember because of what what's going on but like i'm definitely like not gonna pick up this book afterward it's just kind of it's a lot to handle i found myself a lot of the times reading one or two chapters trying to digest all of that and then maybe like hours later or even the next day i would read a few chapters and yeah it's been a long time honestly since the last time i saw you guys we are going to finish it today i powered through last night with the motivation and help from my friend tasia so tasia if you're watching this thank you for that it was much needed because i got through all of part four now i'm on part five which is the last part we only have a few chapters left which i'm definitely finishing it tonight because i want to finish this vlog tonight i feel like i owe it to you guys even though y'all haven't seen this yet i just feel like this just needs to conclude and <laughs> let's start on new fresh ideas plus i still have my september tbr to finish and it's already the well we're halfway through september so i still have some time but this was not where i planned on being but anyways okay enough about me enough about like my reasoning as to not talking to you guys let's talk about the book there are a couple of things that i do want to hash out i don't remember the last time we spoke like what we talked about but i'm just going to start with kind of the main point we come to know diana very well and we find out that she was raped by three guys including poe who we know at the beginning of the book who she really liked um yeah it was very gruesome it was very just a lot to read basically and we kind of see how 
because of it, how her story unfolds until present day. And it's just not good. It never is with these circumstances. You know, she didn't tell anyone. She didn't tell her parents. She didn't tell Dr. Levy because she didn't, one, she didn't think anything was gonna be done. She didn't think anyone was gonna believe her. She was just kind of stuck and she felt really lonely. You know, she barely graduated from um, high school. She flunked out of college. She did go back to the Cape to be, you know, to work as a waitress at a restaurant that she actually, you know, developed a family at and she loved it. She loved the, the job, the atmosphere. And she even met a man named Michael Carmody, who is the maintenance man for Dr. Levy's house on the Cape. And he, we love him, okay? Like he is the most patient and loving character for Diana. Like he was written perfectly for her. He's so patient and he just really understands not everything obviously that she's gone through, but he understands what she needs from him. Even through all of her emotional history, she's able to see that very clearly that Michael was the perfect person for her and they got married, which was a great, I loved their story. I loved how that romance really flourished and it took a long time. That's what I mean. Like he was very patient with her. I mean, this wasn't just like one chapter thing where it was like, oh, I'm I'm just gonna write in Michael's character. She's gonna fall in love with him, yada, yada, yada. Like, it wasn't like that. It was definitely a slow burn and I loved it. I absolutely loved that part of the book. I, that was the part that I couldn't put down because I just love how they blossom together. It was beautiful, absolutely be beautiful. Then we find out, you know, after that, just like years and years of healing, you know, she's trying to heal. She's trying to get past it. Michael's definitely helping her. You know, the restaurant's definitely helping her. You know, she's just kind of found a little bit of purpose, um, a little bit of like what her life should look like. Um, even though it's not the life that she planned as a teenager, but it's a life nonetheless that she's pretty happy with. And then one day, Michael's doing maintenance at a house on the Cape and Diana goes with him. And it turns out that it's Hal Shoemaker's dad, Vernon's house, and he does maintenance on it. And she saw a picture of Hal, instantly recognized him, and it was his wedding photo. Diana kind of went through a downward spiral from there and she went into a research frenzy to kind of figure out you know, who is this guy? Because she wanted to basically meet him and look him in the eye, let him acknowledge her, let him understand the life that she currently has because of him. And not only that, she wanted to do research to find out the other two guys too. And like, where, where are they now? And like, kind of do the same thing with him. She didn't want revenge. She didn't want to like hurt them or anything like that, like murder them, but she just wanted them to acknowledge her. She went into a research frenzy. Now this is the point where did not include Michael in any of this. Like she kind of, and I, and I get it, you know, she was so built up with emotion at that point that she kind of had tunnel vision and she didn't necessarily include include Michael because you know when you have tunnel vision like that and you go into a frenzy it's very understandable that you get caught up in your own web you can't even think of inviting another person I mean she wasn't eating when she was doing all this there were definitely descriptions of that where she barely ate because she was so focused she ended up finding research she went to Emlyn Academy looked at yearbook she found a lot about these three men and just kind of the general culture and at Emlyn it's just really upsetting you know it was, it's definitely one of those places that it's like oh boys will be boys culture which we all know that that's just unacceptable. So she finds one of the guys, guy who held her down. He was living a life that, you know, you don't expect of an Emlyn prep academy boy. You know, he was working at Starbucks. He was in a rehab program. He was divorced. His kids saw him like literally within 24 hours and she kind of felt pity for him, but she quickly squashed that because, you know, she was there on a mission. She was there to hurt him some more because she wanted him to feel exactly and you know like what she felt and to suffer like she wanted him to live so that she could suffer or that he could suffer sorry um what he did to her so they met and that quickly escalated to a suicide which was very hard to read and diana's character i don't think she was surprised that it happened but it took a lot out of her and they didn't really talk about it other than they kind of just hinted that you know she definitely did not want that and it was on her shoulders that he committed suicide. So that was really hard to read because it's it's one of those things where it's like, you know, all she wanted was for him to acknowledge her. And now she kind of has this suicide on, like the weight of it on her shoulders when that didn't have to happen. But nonetheless, it did. And so now she is confronting Danny, which is the brother, as we know, of Daisy, who just watched. And then we have Hal who actually committed the rape and she embeds her life into Daisy's. Now this is when like my heart goes into half because Diana's character, 
I loved her. She was the most fascinating one out of everyone. And even though her story was so hard to read, I was really just gravitated, pulled by her presence. But this is when things to me kind of just like, I don't know, like I had to step away just a little bit from her character. So she, you know, like I said, tunnel vision. She wanted these people to hurt, to suffer for the rest of their life, including Hal, but she also wanted for the women in his life to suffer, and that included his wife and, you know, children. He has Beatrice, who is a female. She just wanted them to all hurt. But then when she met Daisy and she met B, it completely changed because she didn't realize that she was gonna really like them, especially B, which is his child. And she knows that like, if she comes out, she's going to hurt this family. And B, as we've already come to learn, is having a very hard time. She's struggling as a teenager and we all know Daisy's story is that you know she feels like she's worthless she feels like she's just another kitchenware item um in Hal's eyes and pretty much everyone's eyes because she feels like she can't live up to societal expectations of the place that she lives at Diana can clearly see this I mean it's written on Daisy's face of how she sees herself um and that's just fairly sad so she understands the repercussions that will happen if and the consequences that she'll have when she confronts Hal, which she does. She confronts Hal and Danny at a Saturday dinner that she was invited to at Daisy's house. And you know, Hal is Hal. He got really aggressive and angry and told her to leave, which she did. And Danny, you can tell like he's been sick this entire book. We don't learn much about him other than that he's a good soul. You know, he volunteers at the soup kitchen. They take in children from foster care. And I think we come to learn as the reader, I'm sure we'll learn a little bit more about him in part five, but I think we're, we're come to the expectation that that day for him was just as horrible, I guess, as it was for Diana, although in different circumstances. And he's just been grieving so much that he's causing illness onto himself, which you know what? I have to admit, like, he deserves it. I know he's a good soul and you're supposed to be conflicted as the reader, but he never stood up. And all of this time, you know, they're older, he could have done something. Another crazy thing that we come to, to learn is he's the one who, I mean, he didn't technically set them up, but he put his sister in Hal's path. And to me, that's like really disgusting. I don't, I don't get why he did that, knowing what he did in the beginning. But yeah, that's why I don't give two craps about <laughs> Danny, even though I think as the reader we're supposed to be conflicted, we're supposed to think that he's a good soul, that, you know, people can learn from their past mistakes, but I don't think he did. Long story short, they find out, they get aggressive, and we close part four with Daisy finding out from Diana because she quickly learned that Diana was putting up uh, a front, you know, she doesn't, she's not a consultant. She doesn't live um, at that one place in Philadelphia. You know, we come, she comes to find out that this person um, is here on a mission and we learn that, or Daisy learn the reason as to why she's here and why she's basically going to cause a chain reaction of events in Daisy's life. So that's where I am. I know that was kind of long-winded. I'm almost at like 13 minutes with this. I'm pretty sure there's not a lot that I'm gonna cut out because there was a lot that we needed to discuss. Now. Before, actually, I, I didn't even mention B. So B is also, you know, she's cutting school. She met a guy for the life of me. I think it's Kate. I don't know. He's so irrelevant in my eyes. Like, I don't know why B's even considering him as anything. But she's just, you know, she's just living a rebellious teenager life. She hates her dad. And I don't blame her. She pities her mom, which that's really hard to see when a child sees you know, your yourself as a parent that way. And Daisy recognizes it, B recognizes it, and that's really hard. Yeah, so B's just, B's been fine, but she was at that dinner nonetheless, and she did see, she, well, she didn't, I don't think she heard anything, but she saw, you know, the way Diana stiffened when Hal got close to her, when he kissed her on the cheek to introduce himself, you know, stuff like that. So she's definitely, aware of like behavioral cues but again she can't attach it to like reason because she has no clue what's been going on so anyways that is where i am um like i said so going for today's plan so i do have a couple of things it's currently 11 a.m in the morning i do have a brow appointment to go to at 12 30 and i'm kind of nervous it's with a different brow specialist but my 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 specialist that i go to all the time she's actually on maternity leave so yeah i'm getting my brows done and then i need to go to a tailor and then i'll come back and read part five for you guys it shouldn't be that long sorry guys i had to cut you off real quick life stuff happened um yeah so basically once i come back from doing all that i am going to continue reading part five i will update you throughout the day 
hopefully I finish it really soon and then we can conclude this but yeah that is the goal for today I hope that we have a very satisfying ending with this book just because of everything that's been going on but we shall see anyways yeah I just wanted to let you guys know that so I will follow up with you later we finished the book you guys I am so excited I have completed Jennifer Weiner's that summer today I had this goal all of today in my head as I was doing some um, errands. I did run some errands actually today. I got some dry cleaning stuff done. I got my eyebrows done for the weddings um, that are upcoming. And so I'm so glad that I was actually able to sit down, finish reading and I flew by, it was like 60 something pages left. And so it wasn't that big of, big of a goal for myself. Sorry, I like blanked out on the word goal. Anyways, I'm gonna kind of wrap this up and I'm just gonna kind of give you my two cents about the ending. So I did like the ending. I thought that everything that happened to each character that finished until the very last chapter, I thought they had a great ending to this long, crazy, spiraling book. And I'm really glad that there are certain things that happened, especially with our character Daisy. I really felt like we kind of got to see more of some decision making made from her because the whole book, you know, we understand that Hal makes the decisions always in their marriage. And this last chapter just really showed, you know, like what she was gonna do with her life now that she understood that Hal just had a really dark past. And that really and truly he wasn't manning up to it, that he just kind of chalked it up to boys will be boys, which is a theme heavily portrayed in this book and another interesting thing that we saw was the perspective of Daisy's mother and you know I understand that there are people in the world like Daisy's mother who like she knew who Hal was and that he had a past and yet she just again chalked it up to boys will be boys and that because he was from a rich background you know, he had degrees, he, he could provide opportunities for her daughter. And, you know, there was a, a section where Daisy just really just spat at her mom about not really raising her after her dad died, which I mean is true. And I'm glad she did that because it was just like her mom basically just wanted to pass the responsibility of taking care of someone as quickly as she could. And especially to a man who, you know, was rich, who had a job, who had a stable life that you know could provide ultimately for daisy whether it was you know loving and romantic or just straight up just like all right here's my credit card we're going to be married don't ask any questions make sure i have food on the table for dinner by 5 p.m it's just so insane to me that people are like that and i know she's just a character like diana's mom's just a character but i'm pretty sure that there are people out there in the world who think like the way she thinks and thinks it's okay and just as like you know again boys will be boys that is definitely heavily like the thing in my mind every time it's just like blinking in neon lights it's just like boys will be boys there's nothing you can do about it and girls just have to kind of come in and basically clean the whole mess up and keep their family centered and stable as much as possible and so yeah so the ending i think was really great um wasn't really drawn out or anything like that it was pretty action-packed which i feel like I hate to say this, but I feel like there was so much just like rambling on the writing, like I said, with like a bunch of character development that we could have gotten to the last part very, well, actually like rather quickly. And I understood why we had so many details because there was one point in the last part that like literally listed so many details of like the past and the present, mixed with the present and like just little things that you're like, ah, oh, that's why this was a whole chapter's worth. and. I understand like everything was tied in a, in a neat bow, but I think it could have been just Shortened just a little bit. We could have gotten to the ending rather quickly and still felt the same impact that I think Jennifer uh, Was trying to give to us which she did. I mean she she gave definitely some feelings of yeah of just hardness but anyway, so I'm going to conclude this so that was that summer by Jennifer Weiner will I continue reading from Jennifer Weiner Honestly, probably not, but I'm not going to say a definite like, no, I'm never going to read anything from her because who knows, like she could have something that is completely up my alley, which I mean, I, I pretty much love all types of genres, but when books really mirror reality and just the gruesomeness of reality, it's something that I kind of steer away from because to me, reading is <laughs> escapism. Let's all be real, right? You know, I want to relax after a hard day at work or just a busy work 
personal life schedule and it's something that like I thoroughly enjoy and I want to dive deep into a character and their journeys and just heart warmth and I mean it doesn't really have to be heart warmth I mean it could be thrillers and murders and stuff like that but <laughs> that sounds so crazy but you know something that just doesn't really hit to too close to home with all these realities especially with 2020 and how that year was uh, a mess which is everything yeah definitely not my cup of tea so i don't know i know she has another book that's currently out i think that's newer than that summer and i just i mean i'll look into it i'll see if it's something that piques my interest but honestly i'm probably gonna give her writing a break it's not that her writing was terrible no she was a pretty good writer it's just like the stories that she portrays or tries to tell it's just it's like i said it's too close to home you guys Anyways, that is the ending of this very just long, not even long, I don't even know if this video is long, I can't even remember how many minutes have passed throughout this whole thing, but just many days have passed. And so I'm really glad that we're concluding this and we're gonna come on to brand new things. I do have some other stuff in the works for you guys, so hopefully I can get this video up and edited. But anyways, if you like this video, please make sure to like it if you really love reading vlogs i do love doing them it's just really weird if we, we have books like this that kind of put me in a little funk but i do like to i do like to do reading vlogs you know don't forget to subscribe as always i'll have my social medias linked down below so you can follow me on whatever platform floats your boat but with all that being said i really hope you enjoyed this i will see you in the next video bye guys mm -hmm.